power in prayer. And we know that when two or three are gathered that God is in the midst and we're two of us are here and there's so many of you out power. there. So we know that God's presence <laughs> and his power is with all of us today. And it is the National Day of Prayer. And we are so glad that you're joining us for a very, very special program on Hope Today. I'm so glad to be joined by my dear friend, Amy Schaefer. Yay. Tell us, we have, we have an incredible show coming up. <laughs> I know, it's powerful day, National Day of Prayer. We have a very special, incredible topic today to discuss with you with guest author Kelly Bellare, and it is Take Every Thought Captive. Now, I just wonder, you know, our thoughts will determine our whole life. So maybe we need to stop today, think about what we're thinking about, maybe renew our mind with the word of God, maybe stop some thoughts and start some thoughts. So I think it's going to be a really, I, to me, I, I want to learn, I want to grow, and I want to go to the next level. Yeah, it's so important that we take our thoughts captive and we make sure that we renew our minds daily and focus on things above. And speaking of focusing on things above, we are so excited because we have a prayer team from South Korea that is here in our studio and you're going to hear from them about revival happening in that nation and how God has put a call in their hearts to come to America to pray in a move of God. So you definitely want to stay tuned. It is going to be a powerful show. And you know, Amy, I just love when God brings together people of different tribes, people of different nations, there is such power in unity. There's a blessing that flows forth. We have some dear Korean friends in our church and when they pray in Korean, it is like a portal of heaven opens up over our church and in that time and we've got to meet so many relatives and I'm telling you, there is a move of God happening in South Korea and we're believing for North Korea and we're believing for that move of God in America and there's just you know what this is not just a American gospel you know I know people say that a lot but it, it is a it is a global, it is a the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that God is moving in and God is pouring out his spirit upon all flesh right now. And we're believing, especially today on the National Day of Prayer. You know, Amy, there's something I just want to share that even as you're just speaking, that God gave me this vision last night that was just so powerful and it's for all of us. And I know we've all have come through such a season. There's been a lot of warfare. There's been a lot of tribulation. There's been a lot of trial. But in the midst of the persecution, in the midst of the testing, there's been an order oil that has been squeezed that as we've been going through the crushing and we just want to encourage you today if you've been walking through some very difficult times where you've just been like God what is happening what is going on just know that that oil is producing something that is so powerful and I truly believe that as all of us have been going through some intense labor pains intense things that are happening it is producing something that is so strong in us that we have the power of our testimony because we know we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and God is calling us out out. God is calling us into the marketplace. God is calling us, whether it's education, the government, media, wherever, spirit, your family, we are truly believing. We are in the midst of a move, so we need to be expectant. We know that God, oh, he is doing something powerful. We're going to see miracles, signs, and wonders like never before. They are breaking forth and breaking out. So, Amy, I am just so excited what God is doing today. And we also know that in the crushing and in the pressing, there is a new wine. You know, the goal of the enemy is to steal, kill, and destroy. And one of the ways that he tries to do this is by filling our minds with lies and negative thoughts. The good news, though, is that we have Jesus and he offers a truth that sets us free. Author and speaker Kelly Bellare is our next guest. And in her new book, Take Every Thought Captive, she offers practical steps that will help you change your life by changing your thinking. Kelly, welcome to Hope Today. Amy and Sydney, it's such a pleasure to be with you today. Tell us where this message came from. I mean, were you struggling with thoughts at some point where you thought, I need to work through this and I need to write a book about taking every thought captive? Amy and Sydney, I had a moment here where I almost felt like I was going to cry because my God has delivered me from my thoughts. And I will tell you, when I was in college, I struggled with an eating disorder. I hated myself. I hated who I was. I hated how I would try to fake like I was somebody for everybody, and yet I felt like a nobody. 
and I went through depression and rejection and abandonment and self-hatred thoughts. And then I found Jesus and he delivered me from so much in so many ways in my thoughts. But at the same time, I would read God's word and then by afternoon and I'd be like, I'm not actually living God's word. Like I'm getting annoyed at people. I'm reactive. I'm offended. I'm discouraged. I'm demotivated. I'm insecure. And so there was this gap in my life and I'm thinking, okay, Lord, your word is your word. Where's the gap? And I began to realize that the gap is really in my mind because God can say his word, but is it my word? Jesus may have revelation and vision and discernment and wisdom to give me, but am I yielding to it and really receiving it? And so I realized the greatest battle we can fight is in our mind, where God's word actually becomes our mind up here. And we are not conformed to the pattern of the world, but when, then we're transformed by the renewing of our mind so that we can discern then the perfect, good, and pleasing will of God. And when we know his will, everything changes. And he did that for me. And that's why I wrote this book, because I wanted to harness that and really write down the learnings and the wisdom so other people's lives could be transformed too. Can you unpack the statement, our thought life determines our whole life? I mean, that's a big statement to think that what I'm thinking about is determining my entire life. Amy, this is not an understatement, because just think for a second. Our thoughts determine our words. Our words form our actions and our reactions. And our actions and reactions form our relationships and the outcomes that we see in everything we do around us. So when we harness our thoughts and we think as Jesus thinks, we love as Jesus loves, we are the hands of Jesus as he reaches out his hands, we're the feet of Christ, suddenly we have the power to transform the world. And taking our thoughts captive is the difference from moving to self-absorbency to god reliancy. What do we do if we feel like we're not even worthy of a changed mind? We're not even worthy to stop thinking some thoughts and start thinking some other thoughts. This is the part that I'm so glad you asked about because the reality is many people here who are listening today, I believe feel like this is impossible for me. It's impossible for me to change my thoughts of depression, my thoughts of reje rejection, my thoughts of dejection. And they think, or insecurity, they think that they are stuck. You may think right now you are stuck in the pit you are in, but I wanna let you know the ground is level at the foot of the cross. And my friends, the Lord has saved me from so much. Uh, financial, health, uh, marital, um, you know, self-hatred issues. If he did it for me, a sheep at the foot of the cross, there is no difference from me and from you. He will do it for you. I think the difference is, and this is really what I felt in my heart to release this morning. So this question is perfect. We have to boldly storm the throne of grace for all the grace and mercy we need. It's like if we are on a highway, and I know that there was some traffic even for Amy and Sydney getting in this morning, but we're behind a big rig truck of worry, anxiety, fear, stress, um, burdens, and the, the, our past, what the future looks like, we can't even see the horizons of God's goodness. But when we receive the grace of God and we go to the throne of God and say, your grace is enough. Your power's perfected in my weakness. You can help me transform my thoughts. Suddenly, that grace is power to literally transform our minds. And I write about this in the book, Take Every Thought Captive. This is available, not just for me, but for you. This is available for you. And I want you to know you can get out of the pit you're in. And the pit is not what's happening to you. It's not what's happening around you. It's not the thoughts in you. The pit is not even there. The overwhelming victory, despite all these things, belongs to us through Christ Jesus who loved us. Romans 8, 37. It belongs to you, my friend. You can press in and see your thoughts transformed. Amen. That is so good. I love the illustration that you gave in your book about whack-a-mole because 
I used to play that game at Chuck E. Cheese and you're standing there and there's like nine blocks or whatever and this mole pops out and you're supposed to hit the mole on the head. And sometimes that's our thoughts. Now, is that what we should be doing like in the spirit, so to speak, is just whacking a thought? Or do we need to dig a little deeper and get to the root of that thought? Amy, seriously, that is what it's like, isn't it? It's like, oh, I have this thought over here. Now I'm thinking this. I'm bad. I'm in sin. I'm, I'm messing up. You know, I'm not righteous. I'm not good. I'm a screw up. What's wrong right. with me? And it's just one thing after another. The problem with that is that we live on defense. We're constantly caught up in me, myself, and I. Whereas God is like, take the land. You're more than an overcomer. It's everything Sydney was talking about at the beginning of this. Signs, wonders, miracles. But if we're in our own mind, how can we be in the very mind of Christ? Okay, you can tell I'm excited about this, can't you? <laughs> well, I wrote about this in the book, Take Every Thought Captive, where I have a stop start process to taking our thoughts captive. Mm -hmm. Many people have talked about, oh, it's just take the thought that is the lie and replace it with truth. Mm -hmm. Yes, that can work, but it is a whack-a-mole kind of thing because it pops up, it pops up, it pops up. If we're able to take a step back and go a little bit deeper to say, what are the beliefs that I have underneath this thought? Where did this thought first come from? What agreements do I need to renounce and we go in a little bit further, we can help heal the inward parts so our outward actions and reactions are not emotional, but they're Christ-loving, they're Christ-exalted, they're fruit-filled. And that's super powerful. It may sound like a lot, but once you go through the stop-start process, it's easy to get it down and to, uh, to activate. And I have all the details on that on itakethoughtscaptive.com and free resources. If you can't afford the book, I wanted to make it easy for everyone to access. Awesome. Kelly, I love like the point that you're making about like we have to renounce some of those things, those lies that have been penetrated in our brain. So what have you seen as a, some of the common things that if I'm, you know, I, I need to take these thought captives, but what are some of the things that we can recognize, be like, okay, this is not of God, this is a lie of the enemy. What are some of those things that look like so our viewers can say, you know what, I've been thinking that way and I didn't realize I was in that trap and in that lie. Sydney, thank you for asking that. I'll just admit, sometimes I go through the world and I'm like, I'm not seen. Nobody sees me. I'm just, I think about that secret place, the most high, you know, hidden spot with the Lord. I just feel sometimes I'm always there. But then a good thing can turn into a negative thing, right? Mm -hmm. If it's a subconscious belief. I had to go back and say, God, is that really from you, this thing that I'm unseen? Many of us have had familiar thoughts for a long time, but just because we know them doesn't mean they're good for us. I call them, some of our thoughts are like a bad best friend, right? We've had them <laughs> since childhood. So because this friend is always talking, we know them really well, but that doesn't mean that what they're saying to us is even good. And so I had to go backwards and I said to myself, where did, where was the first time I really felt unseen? And I remembered a time where I was um, in my front yard and I was just screaming out, crying. I was like, are my parents going to come? I was crying. I was like, do they see me? Are they going to come? Will they rescue me? And I was just pretending, you know, I was pretending like I was crying, but I think I had formed this belief, even though my parents were great parents and really loving that nobody saw me. And so that was like a familiar, bad, best friend who was speaking in my ear. Some of us don't even realize the lengths and the widths and the depths of some of the negative thoughts that we've been listening to. And on the other side, the positive lengths, widths, and depths of God's love that wants to come in if we make room by removing those thoughts for his love to then penetrate us, which is so powerful. That is a great example. I do not want a bad best friend speaking in my ear all the time. What thought do we need to avoid at all cost? The thought that is coming to me right now, Amy, is the stupid doggone lie, I am not enough. I just want to speak to that right now. And I'm talking to everyone who is listening. You are more than a conqueror. It is no longer you who live, but Christ who lives in you. 
you, if God be for you, who can be against you? And I just want to remind every listener that truly Christ is in you, the hope of glory. So if he is in you, how could you ever look at yourself and say you're not enough when the king of all glory, all power, all might, all strength, all goodness is actually by his spirit living through you. You are more than enough in Christ Jesus. And I believe, why is this so powerful? I'll tell you. Because it moves us from being, oh, woe is me. I'm Everything's going bad. My life is in shambles. And getting into our mental pity parties, our worry, our anxiety, and moves us from seeing the size of our problems, the size of our issues, to the size of our God, where we know literally There is nothing he can't do. There is no mountain he can't move. There is no person he can't conquer. And there's no thing his word, which is the hammer, can't take down. Kelly, that's so good. I I literally feel like you're sitting right in front of me, right with me, just encouraging my heart and my thought life. Listen, today is the National Day of Prayer. And there are people right now struggling with thoughts. I mean, anxiety mental health, health in relationships, just all kinds of crazy thoughts. Will you take a minute or so and can you just pray for those who are struggling and they just really need breakthrough? Amy, I've been waiting for you to ask this because this is really what I want to do today. And I know the Lord has assigned me on National Day of Prayer because there are going to be strongholds broken right now because his grace and his power is enough. So in the name of Jesus, I come on behalf of my brothers and sisters, my fellow sheep, my fellow sinners who are now saints by the blood of Jesus. And I just pray a breaking off, a breaking off of any spirit of fear and trauma that may be blocking them from knowing the glories and the riches and the love of Christ Jesus. I pray right now that worries must cease. And God, I ask right now that my brothers and sisters receive grace. I just see some of you just holding your hands out right now, just literally receiving and opening your heart as if it was a basement door. I pray right now you receive all the grace you need right now that you not be conformed to the pattern of the world, but right now that you be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I pray right now the mind to be renewed in Jesus' name. God, thank you that there's even going to be testimonies of peace coming on to people right now. Be renewed in your mind that you will now be able to discern like never before the good and the perfect and the pleasing will of God. You're going to see in new ways. You're going to hear in new ways because his power, even I see yourself even giving yourself more grace, his power right now, right now, you're going to have understanding his power is being perfected in your weakness. God, let them see right now, right now, your power now is being perfected in their weakness. God, I thank you that where even there was self-hatred, there's going to be a humbling underneath your power and surprise and awe and wonder. I pray, Lord, at how you're moving in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Kelly. Take every thought captive. Exchange the lies of the enemy for the mind of Christ. Kelly, we really like you and we really appreciate all that you've invested in us today. Well, I really like both of you too. So it's a match made in heaven. (laughs) Love that. A match made in heaven. (laughs) Well, stay tuned. We have so much more of hope today coming up. And are you ready for a move of God? Because we are so excited. We have Pastor Kim and Yuri. They're going to be with us to share how God is moving in South Korea and how there is a movement happening here that our Korean brothers and sisters are praying right here in America for us. You don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. Cornerstone Television exists to spread the good news through Bible-based programs and a fully staffed prayer line. Through CTVN, lives are saved, hearts, minds, and bodies are healed, and Jesus is lifted high. We can't do this work without you. Would you consider sending a gift this month to keep the gospel moving forward with power? When you give, we'll send you Listen, Love, Repeat, which presents scriptural examples of those who lived alert, including Jesus, who noticed those who least expected to be seen, gives creative ideas for showing love to friends and family, 
suggests practical ways to reach out to the lonely, marginalized outcast, helps you comfort the grieving, and so much more. Ask for your copy of Listen, Love, Repeat when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Hope truly does happen here, and it is the National Day of Prayer. You know, one thing we love is when brothers and sisters, we dwell together in unity, and we know that our faith in Christ Jesus is one of the nations. And we're so excited that we have Pastor Sug Il Kim and Yuri Yi. They are from South Korea, and we have a Korean prayer team that is behind us. You see us. The wave guys are so, this is so beautiful. We are so excited to have <laughs> you all with us today. It is such an honor. And so can you first, like, tell us, like, Pastor Kim, that about the move of God that happened first in South Korea after the Korean War. 한국 전쟁 어, 시작했었을 때쯤 한국에서 어떤 일이 일어났었는지 짧게 나눠 주실 수 있으실까요? 음, 한국 전쟁 때 저희는 굉장히 가난하게 되었고. So after the Korean War, South Korea was one of the poorest countries in the world. 많은 사람들이 고통 가운데 있었습니다. And many people were in pain and suffering. 수많은 전쟁 고아들이 발생되었어요. And there were many orphans uh, coming. 그때 미국 교회와 미국 사람들이 저희 나라를 많이 도와줬습니다. And a lot of American soldiers helped um, our people. 여러분들의 도움이 있었기 때문에 오늘날에 한국이 있게 되었어요. And because we received your help, and that, uh, that is why we are able to be here today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's truly beautiful. And just talk to us about, you know, the move that, you know, after the Korean War and the thing that the Spirit of God was moving in South Korea. What are some of the things that you saw happen in your country? Mm -hmm. 한국 교회가 굉장히 어려웠었지만 미국 교회와 또 미국 사람들의 물질적인 도움, 또 영적인 도움을 많이 받게 되었습니다. So the Korean church was in a lot of suffering and pain, but the American church and the American people in general uh, helped the South Koreans with materials that we needed and also spiritually. 이미 전쟁 이전에도 미국 교회가 저희에게 복음을 전해 주었고 어, 전쟁 이후에도 어, 여러분들의 그런 도우심과 또 가르침을 통해서 영적으로 어, 자립할 수가 있었어요. And we received the gospel through the Americans, and not just the gospel, but education and a lot of other things. We were able to civilize ourselves. That's truly really, that's truly really amazing. It's just like how you see like with America and South Korea, just. God in the midst of it all. And talk to us about, you know, now we're fast forwarding like more than 50 years later, that there is a call on your people's heart to come here and to pour God's love and His power and His Spirit and the Gospel here in America. So for the Korean church, the American church is like the mother's womb. 어, 최근에 미국 교회와 또 미국 사회의 여러 가지 문제들을 듣고 어, 저희들의 마음은 어, 깨어지고 또 부서지게 되었습니다. Recently, we heard news about um, the happenings, the spiritual happenings that are prevalent in the American church right now, and when we think of that, it breaks our hearts. 미국 교회는 저희 나라에 복음을 전해졌을 뿐만 아니라 지금도 전 세계에 복음을 전하는 제일의 선교 국가입니다. Not only did the American church spread the gospel to us, but it is still one of the biggest churches in the world. 하나님 저희들의 마음 가운데 이 미국 교회와 미국 땅 가운데 하나님의 임재하심이 필요하다는 그런 마음을 주셨습니다. And we received the heart that God's presence is in desperate need for the American church. And you said something that it said there's things you're seeing in the American church that is breaking your heart. What are things that are breaking your heart about us in the American church in America? So for me personally, what breaks my heart is that um, many 
uh, local pastors and um, the American church are weakening and they are losing their strength and the influence of the Holy Spirit. And there are so many things that are um, prevailing in this generation right now. 그런 영적 지도자들의 마음의 눌림, 어, 어떤 압박, 어, 부담감 어, 이런 것들이 어, 좀 마음에 슬퍼지고 있고 어, 그런 다시 한번 목회자들이 엘리야와 같이 담, 담대하게 하나님의 말씀을 선포하고 어, 두, 주의 일을 감당할 수 있기를 소원하는 마음이 있습니다. I hear that they are feeling um, down and they are feeling depressed and they feel like some kind of a stronghold is uh, pushing them down and I really hope that they can rise up like Prophet Elijah's in these times. That is like such I know so dear to her heart. Like Avi, she's a pastor of a church, so I know this is near and dear to her heart, like heart as well. And then we just want to take a moment. So it is the National Day of Prayer for you all to pray for us here at America. So can you take a moment and to pray whatever God has put in your heart to pray for us? 국가 기도의 날인 만큼 미국 위해서 잠깐 기도를 해주셨으면 좋겠다. 다다 같이 기도하네요. 선생님 인도해 주시면 될것 같아요. 네, 우리가 함께 미국 을 위해서 미국 교회를 위해서 어, 기도하기를 원합니다. 하나님의 특별한 임재하심과 일하심이 이땅 가운데 또이 교회 가운데 일어나게 하여 주시옵소서. Uh, let us pray for the American church right now. Let us pray for God's presence to be upon uh, this land and the American church. 다시 한번 미국 교회가 성령의 권능을 덧입게 되어서 세계 선교를 완성하는 일에 쓰임 받게 하여 주시옵소서. That the American church would be clothed with the presence of the Holy Spirit and that they would uh, be the spiritual leaders to lead the gospel to the ends of the earth. 하나님을 경외하는 그리고 하나님을 사랑하는 다음 세대가 일어나서 세계 선교하는 일에 귀하게 쓰임 받게 하여 주시옵소서. And may the next generation rise up to fear God and to partake in this mission. 이 땅과 이 교회 위에 부흥이 임하도록 하나님께 기도했으면 좋겠습니다. Let us pray right now for God's presence to be upon North America and for there to be a revival once again. 다 같이 주님의 이름을 부르고 기도하겠습니다. Let us call upon the name of the Lord at this time and pray together. 주여, 주여, 주여. 사랑해 하나님 아버지 은혜와 사랑을 감사를 드립니다. 하나님께서 피로 갚주고 세우신 내국 교회와 미국 땅 가운데 하나님의 성령이 임하여 주시기를 원합니다. 특별한 하나님의 임재와 특별한 하나님의 일하심이 있는 가운데 나타나게 하시옵시고 아버지 잠든 영성 거인이 미국 교회가 깨어나게 하시고 목회자들이 엘리어와 같이 하늘에 불을 내리게 하여 주시옵시고 에스겔과 같이 죽은 아버지 교회를 살려내는 역사가 있게 하여 주시옵시고 하나님 아버지 이 땅의 모든 죄악들이 있어서 성령의 불로 이 땅이 새롭게 하여 주시고 예수의 불로 이 땅을 정결하게 해 주시고 하나님 아버지 이 땅에 부흥의 세대가 일어나서 다시 한번 열방 가운데 주의 복음을 주시옵소서 힘이 깨기에 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 주시옵소서 on tomorrow's Hope Today, learn how to defeat the enemy and get delivered and set free. Pastor Greg Locke shares about his riveting new documentary that follows him and a diverse group of demon-slaying preachers as they begin to spark one of the greatest awakenings in the history of the Christian church. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.